What's up with the what's ups? Today on this episode of Mayhem and Motorcycles, as y'all saw, I finally got the paint done. So, I did have camera set up. I had everything set for time lapse so I could get everything, but uh, one GoPro I forgot to turn on and one GoPro the batteries didn't last long and uh, I didn't think y'all wanted to just see a bunch of prep. Anyway, so just to recap, um, I did not show the process of how I did it. Um, one, because I was learning and it took forever to kind of get everything taken care of and figured out plus the time span I had trying to get it done and then the weather changing on me. I mean the winds were bad here so it was it was an ordeal so I didn't know how it was going to happen um, I will show a time lapse of the pictures that I did show and you'll kind of see why I was kind of hesitant on how it was going to look because once I started adding color um, it just started looking weird but, uh, but you'll see as the pictures progress how it gets a lot cooler so I won't go into detail or explain the process of how I did just because one, like I said, uh, I didn't know how it was going to happen and turn out. And two, uh, I was asked not to reveal uh, the technique uh, told to me by uh, the guy I met in the Austin area. So that being said, let's take a look at it again, huh? So on the frame, I was trying, or I was planning to get everything pulled out um, so I could just mess with the frame but time just kind of ran off on me so uh, I did the best I could by prepping everything to keep it uh, from getting paint on any of the motor I won't really know how good of a job I did until I pull off but the motor and stuff is still greasy enough where if there was any overspray it'll be easy to wipe off I did wash the frame and use grease remover several cans and brake clean and water hose I mean I had the inside of here flooded uh, the first day for prep and that sucked so that allowed me to jump onto the tins and you know I think maybe y'all might have saw it when I had everything taped up if not that was about that time um, you know I got everything taped up and then had the patterns drawn out on it I still really didn't know how I was gonna do it everything just kind of fell into place as I was doing it um, all I knew is I kind of knew what I wanted and then as I was you know adding the flames and the border you know actually drawing it onto the tape um, it was still kind of hard to decipher you know what colors wear and whatever so I already knew I kind of wanted you can't really see on that side so I really knew I already knew I wanted flames to be the cracked uh, paint part um, so what I did was the inside of the flames is just the primer same as the back and the whole rest of that. See how that ended up nice with a primer bullet. Well, I was able to sand it all the way through to give it a nice effect coming out. And uh, as I was laying in the uh, metal flake, the uh, base color in the bottom of it was really looking nice. So I didn't want to like cover it all up. So I just kind of circled it and that you know just kind of happened which I thought was really cool I thought I kind of did that on the flame too because I didn't really put a lot of flake into the the, the flame and you can see how it's real thick on all the border but not so much here but then again the light is opposite side so maybe I'm just not seeing it as good as it is on this side I don't want to touch anything uh, I'm about four hours in on just lip spraying the uh, clear coat. Like I said, weather got crazy and uh, it got into the 30s overnight. So 
before I did anything I had to bust up heaters and basically get the garage to 60 degrees right now it's uh, 68 so as I sprayed I kept the air mover under the uh, garage a little you know open but because it was so strong as soon as I did one coat I would open up the door and let everything flush out and then I do coat by coat like that I think I probably got about five coats of clear on everything so motor mounts I did the correct paint uh, old tank because the uh, pinstriping was so freaking hard I don't remember it being that hard before but doing the pinstriping on the tank and the fender I'm gonna wait till I get to Fandango and get the the old tank and the uh, frame done there um, I believe they're gonna have a pinstripe person out there so hopefully fingers crossed uh, they're not too expensive and I can do that there but let me show you you know my pinstriping I don't know if you can see there's the on the outside of the metal flake first off the brush I couldn't get really a good coat on it so some of it's thin and some stick some of it's out of line like a little kid who can't draw and that right there is part of the black primer going through same over there but same on the flames I should have went on the flames with the uh, turquoise but I went with the red and can't really see it I wasn't really too happy this was my my test one so you know I figure this is what all the bags and this stuff are gonna go on so it might not be seen anyway so who knows this side got better I used a fatter brush a different thicker brush and basically taped one end and then used the edge of the painted side as my border and it came out a lot better I got better coverage Let's see. let's see what I was talking about I should have did that that flame in the turquoise once I put a line to help border it in it was easier but uh still sucked Let's see how I did the same on this one that's supposed to be hot pink the first uh that's the pinched up I did there and then turquoise on the outside of the flame man that's cool huh and then this side the same I don't know if you can see it, but it's a uh, hot pink and then a little flake and then the turquoise. So by tomorrow around 10 a.m. ish, by the time I'm already up and around getting ready, um, the frame should be ready for me to start messing with. So plan is tomorrow morning as I gotta get everything unwrapped. And I gotta get basically everything put back on the bike. Uh, so it's, you know, ready to rock and roll where all I have to do is put on the tins. Uh, Sunday morning, I'm taking back off to Austin. Go back to work down there for the week. Got another small tile job out there that I'm gonna knock out um, just in time to be back over here, pick up on Yesto, and then head to Fredericksburg for the Fandango. So, I am going to make the Fandango, uh, I'm going to be working it, so uh, yeah, that's the plan so far, so 
uh, I'm taking the tins with me so I can do the water sanding and the polishing and all that while I'm on the road at my campsite or whatever after work and then basically uh, have everything ready so once I get back for the weekend I'll get the tins put back on and then uh, she'll be ready for the uh, Fandango Chopper Show. I'm really excited to see how everything looks once it's all together. And who knows, maybe I might, you know, if I have enough time, go ahead and do the outlining of that myself and see what happens. But other than that, that's the plan. So that's the latest update as of now. Um, and that's basically, I guess, it for this episode of Mayhem and Motorcycle. I'll end it with the uh, picture time lapse of basically uh, from start to ending of the pictures that I did take for TikTok. But uh, I'll see you guys on the flip side. And if you guys are going to Fandango, we'll see y'all there. Peace.